Chris Orpel. Congratulations for being inducted into the Hall of Fame. And obviously, you. you've had great success as a wrestler and as a Division I head coach, and you've had a wide variety of experiences in the sport. Who was it or what individuals uh, did you know that probably influenced you the most? It had to be my dad, uh, Frank Horpel. He coached as a hobby, but um, it was a very intense hobby. So he, uh, he dabbled at the high school level and at the uh, junior college level. But ultimately, his, his best coaching was as a club coach for a, a program called the Orange Coast YMCA. And uh, I wrestled for him initially. So before I got to high school, uh, I think it was between eighth and ninth grade, I finally started competing. Um, but I was, I was terrible initially, and he just kept encouraging me, telling me that it would be good for me in the long run, that even if I didn't become a wrestler, it would uh, teach me some valuable lessons. Um, but luckily, within a few years, I started winning, and so that's how it all started. Yeah. Who was your idol growing up in the sport, or did you have any? Um, because my high school coach, uh, who was Joe Fox from mm. Northern Iowa and an Iowa native, uh, knew all about Dan Gable, he kept me posted on Dan Gable's accomplishments. So when Gable was a senior in college, I was a senior in high school. And I started following Gable's career from my freshman year on, mostly because my coach, Joe Fox, mm. kept me informed. Um, but, uh, Little did I realize the difference between college wrestling and high school wrestling. Uh, Gable pinned 34 people as a senior um, at Iowa State. and No, he pinned 33. And I was trying to set a national pin record that year, and I ended up pinning 34, thinking that my accomplishment mm -hmm. was similar to his accomplishment, which it was, wasn't anything close. But um, anyway, so my coach would always tell me, well, now he's... 23 and 0, 23 pins. <laughs> so you tried to match him. So I tried to match him. <laughs> now, was it your father who got you started in wrestling, Frank? Yeah. Uh, I figured it probably was. Now, what uh, aspect of your personality or character gave you the high degree of success you had? You know, obviously, you know, coaching for the many years you did at Stanford University, and you know, you were an All-American yourself in college. So. Um. I would say I'm not built for wrestling and I look more like a tennis player. But because of that, I, I learned technique correctly because if I didn't do it correctly, it wouldn't work. So power was my uh, weakest component in mm -hmm. why I was successful. So I compensated by really understanding the technique well and so as an athlete, I think that helped me because uh, the higher up you go, the more perfect your technique has to be. And, um, and then later as a coach, I think, uh, um, you know, I could take someone who had other elements, you know, the strength, the quickness, the mental toughness, and add to the technique. No matter how much they knew, I could always add to it. Mm -hmm. So I would say uh, that was probably my biggest asset. Now, do you think your love for technique is uh, what helped? I mean, uh, you were Dave Schultz's high school coach, and he's obviously known as one of the greatest technicians in, yeah, I, in the I world of all time. I, Did he pick up your love for it, do you think? I think so. I was, I was a perfectionist in terms of mm -hmm. how I wanted him to learn things. Mm -hmm. um, but I can't take all the credit for Dave. You know, Dave was the kind of athlete where I would show him two techniques one day that in my mind were unrelated and then he would come back the next day and combine the two and think that I had taught him this third new technique where they were two combined techniques. So he was kind of like a, a little Einstein um, in terms of his ability to learn technique and then uh, take it to the next level. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty amazing that way. What is the one outstanding moment that you can think about in the sport of wrestling, or maybe you have several, some of the highlights of, of your career? Oh, um, 
I have a few. Uh, I put a lot of pressure on myself to, to pin all those guys my senior year, and when I pinned all four guys at the Southern Section Finals, which, which was the end of our career back then, there was no state tournament yet, uh, when I accomplished it, uh, three out of the four matches ended in a fall with two or less seconds to go. Mm. So I barely pinned those guys, but I just kept putting the pressure yeah. on and, and somehow did it. And ended up pinning 34 out of my 36 uh, matches that year, which was a national record, uh, which made me more recruitable. But that last match where I got the last pin in the last second in the Southern Section Finals was a huge highlight. Mm. Um, I would say winning the Pac-10, actually Pac-8 back in those days. Mm. Um, and then probably uh, in one of my national opens, I beat a world champion, Lloyd Kieser. Mm. Uh, and I felt horrible, and I almost forfeited going into the match because I felt sick to my stomach and weakened by a, a long two-day tournament. And uh, But I decided to wrestle anyway, and for whatever reason, I wrestled the match of my life and beat him. Mm. Um, so that would probably be it, those, those matches. What made you want to go into coaching? Obviously, uh, if one goes to Stanford University and you graduate from there, probably <laughs> your parents aren't thinking, well, he's going to become a wrestling coach. You know, so what was it that made you uh, decide to do that? Well, I was studying architecture, so I was planning on becoming an architect. And um, Stanford had an unaccredited architecture program, so I was actually in the process of applying to graduate school. But this young middle school kid walked into the room saying, hey, uh, I want to do some extra wrestling, uh, and I hear you're an All-American. Can you be my coach? And that was Dave Schultz. Mm -hmm. So I have to say that Dave Schultz probably turned my life around inadvertently. You know, He didn't know that I was going to get so excited by the process of coaching him and, and then wanting to coach others. Uh, and Mark followed shortly after, Mark Schultz. So um, now the first two guys I coached became Olympic gold medalists. So I, I just thought, this is easy. <laughs> every kid. Yeah, every kid's going to be gold. a gold medalist. <laughs> if you had to do it over again, I mean, you coached for many years, Chris. Uh, would you do anything differently, or did you enjoy your career path as it stands? I uh, I really liked it and still enjoy coaching. I'm I'm now coaching at a high school in Palo Alto, Gunn High School. But uh, if I were to do it again, I'd try and take the attitude that I have now, which is to enjoy every part of it. You know, when I competed, I was so nervous that I I never really enjoyed my matches. Uh, it was always after the fact that I felt great. Um, but the process of actually wrestling against a tough guy who was a good challenge, I didn't enjoy it. I was too full of nerves. Uh, I saw Dave Schultz enjoy it so much that I realized, wow, this is how it could be. Mm -hmm. So I would have tried to emulate what Dave had in terms yeah. of how he enjoyed competition. And then as a coach, it, it kind of spread to that too. I, I was, you know, I lived and died on whether we won or lost mm -hmm. instead of on the process and what I was teaching them other than the wins and the losses. You know, the winning and the losing I think should be a, a natural byproduct of mm -hmm. doing things correctly. Mm -hmm. And if you don't worry about it, it seems to come more easily. So I'd change that part. Okay. What would you like people to remember about Chris Horpel? Oh, that he, uh, he worked his tail off, he tried hard, had some success. He was a good guy. Oh, they certainly are. <laughs> and uh, congratulations once again for becoming a member of the California Wrestling Hall of Fame. It's much deserved, and I'm sure your dad would have been proud. Thank you very much.